Hi, I'm Alexandra Barker. Welcome to Relief Beyond Belief, Exploring the World of Natural Healing. Each episode of the show, we examine a different aspect of holistic health that you can incorporate into your life to promote health, happiness, peace, and harmony. And today's topic is Qigong, and my guest today is Kim Bright Wallace from the Healing Qi in Brighton. Welcome to the show, Kim. Thank you, Alexandra. Kim is a Qigong instructor, and she's going to be leading us through some key Qigong exercises as outlined in my book, Relief Beyond Belief. But first, I'd like to give you a little bit of background information. Uh, although Qigong is a new concept to many of us, it's actually been around a very long time. It's an ancient Chinese healing tradition that dates back over 2,000 years. Qigong is based on the belief that any illness it stems from an imbalance of qi, which is the life force energy flowing through the 12 meridians located in the front and back of our bodies. Qigong corrects these imbalances and brings about powerful healing benefits by combining meditation, visualization, breath, and movement to promote a healthy flow of qi to the distressed areas of the body. Qigong's gentle breathing and meditation exercises reduce stress and anxiety, boost the immune system, lower blood pressure, and in general improve health and fitness. And they are so readily adaptable to such a wide range of abilities, they can pretty much be done by just about anyone, wouldn't you say, Kim? That's right. Maybe you'd like to tell us a little bit about your personal experience with Qigong. How long have you been practicing? I've been practicing for four years. I was introduced to Qigong. Um, I went to learn a, a particular type of therapy, and part of that therapy was that we as a therapist had to learn Qigong because it was energy work, and if we spend all day doing energy work, we can end up tired if we're passing on our own energy. So. To learn Qigong, we learn to fill our body with energy, and at the end of the day, we can be full of energy still at the end of the day. Well, that sounds great. That yeah. sounds like something we could all use a little that's more right. of at the end of the day, that's, that's for sure. Right. So do you practice daily? Usually. There, I may miss one or two days, but usually every day I practice some Qigong. And so you would recommend a daily practice of these exercises? Certainly. It, it helps um, ground you. It helps you feel with energy for the rest of the day, a lot like aerobics or anything else, yet the more you do, the more energy you have for the rest of the day. Well, that yeah. sounds great. And I know that um, this is something that uh, these movements are done very slowly, and so I, I invite our, our uh, viewing audience to join us, but just to remember to listen to your bodies, do everything just, just within your own comfort level, and uh, approaching these exercises with a very positive state of mind for the best results and they should be done on a daily basis, I guess anywhere from three to eight times per exercise? Yeah. That's yes. great. Well, how about we, uh, we give the folks a demonstration? Okay. So to begin with, we're going to take our shoes off. Again, we want to be in our bare feet. Um, the reason being we want to be very grounded. And whenever you work with energy, some people can get a little bit uh, lightheaded. And we want them to feel very grounded so that all the energy you use, that you have, that you've gained, you can use it in everyday life. Don't want to be walking around all fluttered. Okay, Sounds so, good. So to begin with, you're in your bare feet. Okay. And you're going to, I'm going to show you where the, what we call the K1 point is on the foot. It's this spot right here. And we want to connect that to the ground, okay? Okay, so that point was just... That's called the K1. Right that's about where, there, the center of the ball of the... That's right. Just underneath it, okay. And that's where the kidney meridian starts, okay? So what you want to do is you lift your toes up, connect that spot to the ground first. Okay. Then you're going to spread your toes, spread the ridge across your feet. You're going to feel like you're falling forward. From there, I want you to just gently bring in your your ankles, your heels, and then lean back on your heels, bend your legs. Now you're what's called a comfortable standing position, which ironically when you first start is not. <laughs> now take a deep breath, and as you exhale, I just want you to let go all the tension from your spine, and inhale again letting your shoulders get heavy and they're just going to hang from your spine. You can wiggle them around a bit if you want just to see if there's any tension. Just work any tension out. Okay. Another inhale. And as you exhale, you're going to let 
all the tension go from your hips, so your body's going to feel very long and heavy. So now you've lengthened your spine. This is what we call a good standing position. You've taken the emphasis away from the muscles, put them on the tendons and ligament. Okay. Um, in North American society, we walk around with our muscles tense a lot because um, we're always stressed, so we're ready to fight or flight. This way, before we do anything else, we have our body relaxed. Okay. Okay. So from here, what we can do, we do a very simple exercise called Reach for Happiness. So I'll show you the, the first time, and then if you want to follow. Okay. So once we're in the, the relaxed position, again, making sure your, your hips are heavy, your feet are heavy, your shoulders are relaxed. A good way to find a good position is if you put your thumbs under your arms and make a hollow. Then okay, when you drop your you. arms down, your arms will be hanging away from your body. Take a nice deep breath in. You pull your hands forward, breathing in. Hands come in front of your, just below your navel. Still breathing in, bringing that energy up to your heart. And what you're doing is just collecting energy and noticing the subtleties of the energy around. Once your hands are in front of your heart, you're going to intertwine them, focus your attention on your hands, exhale, and reach up. Now, once you've reached up, you want to take a deep breath in. And again, you're trying to pull energy into your body. So you're breathing in, reaching up on your toes, and then still breathing in, bringing it down to your heart. Unclasping your hands, bringing them beside your ribs, exhaling and pushing any frustration, negativity that you're feeling right down to the ground. <sighs> okay, you want to try okay, with me? Okay, yeah, I'll do that with you. So again, make sure your body's in a comfortable position. Okay, K1 is K1's pressed connected, and that'll keep you grounded. Okay. So your hands are loose by your body, palms gently out, nice deep breath in. And it's going to be a two-part breath, so don't use all your breath for the first part. Okay. So breathing in, collecting air, collecting a big ball of energy, bringing it in front of your navel. Now breathing in again, collecting more energy and bringing it up to your heart. Intertwine your fingers, palms out, exhale, your focus of your eyes is on your hands and above your head. Now on the inhale, your eyes are still on your hands. Inhale, reach up with your toes. So you're bringing a little of that energy down with you. Still inhaling, pulling it down. Beside your ribs, now you exhale, let go of any tension out of your body. Do you want to do it one more time? Maybe, I think we have time for one more. Okay. So again, just gently collecting the energy. If it helps to visualize, you can visualize white light, you can visualize whatever you want. After a while, your body will become in tune with the subtleties of what you're collecting. Breathe, still breathing in, bring it up to your heart. Intertwine your fingers. Exhale. So by doing this, you're toning your organs because you're stretching. Inhale. Still inhale, bring your hands down. It's good for the heart and lungs. Hands come to the sides and exhale, letting it go any tension. <sighs> so you've moved it right to the ground. Very good. Okay. So we'll just do a few reps, I guess, of each exercise to get the folks the, out there the idea. Sure. So you that's do? reaching for happiness. That's so reaching for happiness. What's the next one? The next one is called the Archer. Uh, it opens up the heart and the lungs. It's very good for posture, again, because it's opening up the chest, so your posture will be better, as well as your balance. It helps to balance. So you need your legs a little more than hip-width distance apart. Again, you're making sure your feet are very, very connected. Again, I'll show you the first time, and okay. then we can do a couple repeats. So to begin with, again, your arms are loose at your sides. Nice deep breath in. You're collecting that ball of energy. You're crossing your hands, palms facing your chest, and as you do this, you'll find that there should be a little area 
at your wrist that feel like they connect. So as you're doing this, you're looking for that connection. Palms are facing you. You've just breathed in. On the exhale, you're focusing on your hands. You make a fist with your right hand. Turn the left hand out. You focus on your middle finger and exhale. Nice deep exhale. Stretch the left arm. Pull the right arm back so you're, it's right by the right shoulder. So now you've opened the chest. Still focusing on that left middle finger. Bring your hand back. And you're switching so that the left hand is closest. That's half the exercise. The other half is to make. Breathe in again. Feel that connection. Make a fist with the left hand. Right hand goes out. And on the exhale, you move the left hand, or sorry, the right hand out and pull the right fist, left fist back. Okay? So exhaling. Again, you're opening up the chest, you're focusing on the middle finger, and then you're bringing your hands back with the breath, and this time the right hand comes closest to the body again. So, okay. as well as, the big thing is that it's opening up the chest, which is good for the heart and lungs. Okay? Okay, so starting, starting with your feet connected. If you don't have your feet connected and a slight pelvic tilt, you'll end up with a sore back, so it's very important to remember okay. that, okay? So your hands just gently by your side, palms out, nice deep breath in, and you're focusing on bringing in new energy to your body, okay? Collecting okay. it. Right hand comes closest, and your hands are open, yeah? Looking for the looking, connection. Looking for that connection. When you found it, then you focus on your wrists or hands, Exhale, make a fist with your right hand, left hand goes out, and pull back, because it's called the archer, you pull back the bow. You want to stay like this for a minute to give your body time to open, and sometimes you'll think you've gone as far as you have, can, and if you let out, try to let out a little more arrow, you'll find you can go further. And then slowly, you breathe in and bring it back. And again, the left hand comes closest this time. Right hand over top. Looking for the connection. Nice deep breath in. On the exhale, you make a fist with the left hand. Turn the right hand out. And exhale. And you're always focusing on that middle finger. So you're finding out where your body stops. Okay. Exhale a little bit further to open that chest up. And then bring it back, inhaling. And the right hand's over top. And would you like to do one more time? Sure. Okay. So nice deep breath in. Looking for the connection at the wrist. The reason that is is because there's certain meridians there that you're connecting together. You're my guest is Kim Bright Wallace from the Healing Chi, and we're talking about Qigong, and Kim is demonstrating some Qigong moves. And we were about to do another rendition of the Archer. So from our comfortable position. Okay, one more of these. So again, your comfortable position. Nice deep breath in, pulling energy towards you. Right, right hand first, left hand over top, looking for the connection at your uh, wrist. Exhaling, making a fist with the right hand, left hand turns out, and pulling that bow. And go back as far as you can. You may find the more repetitions you do, the further you can go back. So your body's getting a nice stretch down the side as well. Inhale, bringing it back. Left hand comes closest to your body, right over top. So you're inhaling, making that connection. Exhale, make a fist with the left hand, right palm turns out, and exhale, opening up. And breathing in and pulling that back. So your hands come down in front, and then you're just dropping your hands to below your navel, which is where we collect energy. Okay? Great. Okay? And I'll show you 
another one, which is called Bending for Health. It's, again, there's balance in it, so it's a little bit long when you first try it. So, again, I'll show you first. Okay. So, you, again, are in a good standing position, bringing your hands out in front to the front of your body where the kidneys would be behind. Once you've got your hands in front, you're trying to make a connection, trying to feel your kidneys with your hands from here, so you're trying to make a connection. Then you turn your palms down, thumbs down, which is, this is what we call a tiger mouth. If you look at it, it looks like a tiger mouth. It's also opening up the large intestine meridian. Oh. Okay. So your thumbs are down. I have to go through where I was inhaling and exhaling. So I've inhaled to bring my thumbs down. Exhale, bring my hands around, over my kidneys. The thumbs are facing forward. Exhale back. And you want, you want to go back as far as you can. Inhale forward. Drop your arms and come down. So this is very good for your spine. So you want to make sure your arms are loose, your neck is loose, your hips are loose. You come back up. Hands go on your adrenals again. It's very good for the kidneys and adrenals as well. Exhaling back. <sighs> Inhale, coming forward. Bringing the arms forward and down. And when you come down this time, you can grab yourself at behind the knee, the back of the leg, or the ankle. So you get a nice stretch. You drop your spine and drop your head. So we balance both forward and back. And then you slowly come up. Okay? Okay. Kim, what's the best time of day to be doing these exercises, or do you feel it matters? It depends. Early morning? On, morning is a good time. There are many different Qigong exercises. There are some that are very relaxing and just release, will release stress and grounding. That's a good time to do those exercises at night before you go to bed, if you, especially if you have trouble sleeping. Oh. The other um, more energetic exercises are very good to do in the morning, so you've got that. It's to wake to, you up. Yeah. Start um, your new day. You don't want to do them at night because you literally will not be able to go to sleep. You'll be up at 2 o'clock in the morning, house clean, which oh. may not be a bad thing. <laughs> but. Okay, okay, so again, so beginning in a comfortable position. Comfortable position. Make sure your knees are a little dropped. Arms come out. Breathing in, collecting energy. So your hands are by your abdomen. Again, in front of where your kidneys would be. You're trying to make a connection with those kidneys through your body. Hands come down as you exhale. Inhale, dropping the thumb, making that tiger mouth. Exhale, bring your hands back over your kidneys. So now you're stimulating your kidneys and adrenals. Exhale back as far as you can go, but just as far as you can go. Inhale, coming up. And your arms go down by your hang as you go down. So this is something if you have heart problems or high blood pressure, you want to do very gently. Don't go past where you're comfortable. So you're giving your spine a nice long stretch. And then inhale coming up. Hands go back over the kidneys. Exhale going back. Inhale coming up. Arms come up, still inhaling. And down. Now this time you're going to grab behind your legs, your knees, your lower legs, or your ankles, or if you can stretch that far without a problem, use your index finger and wrap around your big toe and stretch. And then slowly come up. And always come up slowly. Otherwise you can um, feel a little dizzy. You want to come up vertebrae by vertebrae when you come up. You're also looking for where your body feels tight. If it feels tight in certain areas, when you're inhaling, bring your breath right into that area. Oh, okay. Okay? 
and then it's the breath that moves the energy out. Okay. Okay. I think we have time for one more. Do you want to do one more of this, or do you want to go oh, on one more? One fresh exercise. Okay. No, um, the last one is called punching for energy, or the energy punch. And again, I'll show you first. What else do we do but pull energy in around us? So you're pulling it in. This time it comes up to your solar plexus, which is just below the uh, rib cage. Make a fist. On the exhale, you bring all that energy that you've just collected down to the dantian, which is that storage area two inches below your navel. <sighs> now you inhale. You're inhaling through your feet, right up to that storage unit. And as you exhale, you're going to push out with your hand. <gasps> Pull, inhale, pulling in, exhale, <gasps> inhale, <gasps> <gasps> and when you're inhale, when you're done, you just bring your hands back to your navel. And well, when it seems like a great stress buster. Yes, very good. And I want you to see what your body, how your body feels when you're doing this, because okay. you'll notice little changes in your body. Okay. Okay. So hands again, just at your sides. Nice deep breath in, and you're pulling everything you can in. You're greedy. You want as much energy as you can. Okay, so breathing in. Hands come up just below the, by the solar plexus. Make a fist. And as you exhale, you're bringing all that collected energy into the dantian, the storage area. <sighs> Inhale. In through your feet as well. And as you exhale, all that energy from here is coming out. <sighs> pulling in. And again, from the other side. So this is the same stuff that breaks bricks. <laughs> really? Okay. And again. And pull it in more. And really punch it. And pulling it in. Now, how does that? How does your body feel? You know, oh, just, I feel warmer. I feel. Yeah. It, yeah, it's definitely really feel the, the energy circulating. Very good for the circulation. Yeah. It also affects the central nervous system as well so it's very and it increases vitality so it's a good thing to do as you say in the morning very good to do if you're frustrated because you can direct that frustration and then take it and do something else with it so some really good health benefits associated with these exercises and and i imagine uh, that you've noticed a few in your own oh, personal yes. life would you yeah. like to, to share some of that um yeah i many health benefits um you know, I feel better, I have more energy to do the work I do. But I've also found that I'm more secure in my own body because you do start to, you feel what's happening in your body. And once you feel it, you, it, you own it. So you're very comfortable with it. I was very, very shy. Going out in a crowd terrified me. Um, being able to do these exercises, I was grounded enough and secure in my own space and boundaries that I could go out around other people and not you know, let it worry me. So it made a huge difference That's psychologically great. for me as well as physically. That's a really good benefit. Yeah. And there's a wide range of these exercises too. And I believe you mentioned that Tai Chi, tai chi, tai chi is actually a derivative of... Uh, That's right. Qi Gong is all the energy um, practices that you can imagine because it, that simply is energy and skills. Tai Chi is part of Qigong. There's many more. Um, there's space and boundaries. Um, Iron Shirt, which teaches you to really, especially when you're in stressful situations, to, to build energy and build yourself up. Like you really do have an Iron Shirt, so you're like Superman. You can go out and be in st stressful situations without um, feeling attacked or whatever. So there's a lot. Earth Qigong, which I do a lot of to keep you on the ground and feeling grounded so you're not, uh, well, so you can direct that energy so you can do something with it for your, in your day. And pretty much anybody can do these exercises. Yeah, yes. Any level, and so age isn't a barrier. It isn't. Um, it's very adaptable for people that have problems. Um, you can do sit and you can do them from sitting. Again, you make sure your feet are grounded if possible, but you can do it sitting. Um, people that are really, um, not feeling well, you can actually even do it laying down, which works well because your whole body's on the ground. And then you 
do meditation and moving that energy around, you can find out spots yeah. that are blocked in the body. We didn't speak too much about the, the whole visualization aspect, but uh, that's something I'm sure you go into a great length when you're, you're teaching this program. You offer yes. Qigong, as I mentioned, as well as yoga yes. at the Healing Qi in Brighton. Yeah. So would you like me to sit back down again? Sure. I hope our viewers have enjoyed this and that you, you put this into practice in your own lives and it really is a great way to just uh, reduce stress and boost your health and boost your immunity and lots of great things. And there's such a wide range of these exercises that you can do, you do it every day and not even That's do right. the same routine That's right. twice. So That's lots right. of good books also available. There are. The library um, and 